Welcome everybody to Mud Flood was Armageddon. The Mud Flood was Armageddon. Don't let them tell you anything else unless they're willing to debate you in a fair and honest way. And you want to debate RJ, the famous rancher from Wisconsin? He he asked, I, I said, hi, RJ. And he goes, how much deception is permissible? Accepted. How deception. much deception is accepted as impermissible when it is not a salvation issue? You know, when is it not a salvation issue if a Christian is deceived? And you know he's deceived, and you want to tell him, and you try to tell him everybody's deceived, and they choose to be deceived. To redefine the question, and and welcome, brother Randy. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Well, I'm just, I was curious. That's why I uh, pitched it at you, you know, how much accepted deception may be permissible, you know, without it being a salvation issue. Uh, some, you know, it might be you're in a different denomination. Uh, let, let's see. Let, let's what are some of the doctrines baptisms may you know because i can argue both ways you know i prefer infant baptism by sprinkling some people think that i'm going to hell because i don't immerse well i could make the immersion argument to most people and convince them you know and i but there's that baptism replaces circumcision thing and that was for babies yeah. i don't want to i'm not gonna you know that's not well, deceived I, i'm under you know the understanding it requires two elements okay water and the word and then you need to use them you know in a in a sincere way counting the cost because there there was a time i think during the john the baptist when people would have you know had if john the baptist you know dog eat dog world you know telling the soldiers don't extract you know extra bribes just work with your pay you know and other people just be good repent we're doing it wrong i think that knowing what we know about it was a star fort world and how wow i mean they dressed up every day it looked like in the pictures anyway and when you read about the people in the bible they were certainly rich and a lot better off than the world we live in today they had a they had it going on it but and there was a lot of people in this country you know, even though we can look back at history now and see we were set up for failure, it would have been hard. It would have been hard, near impossible to convince me of that in the mid 1990s through 2010. When, you know, in those 30 years, I made over a million dollars, you know, and, and to my wife might have made that much also. You know, it, it was just, it was crazy. It, it, it was America. It was great, man. It was great. We were going to go to the moon again soon. And I didn't believe in 9-11 at that time. I knew the government was bad and I protested taxes and abortion, but I didn't realize how bad it was until 2011, yeah. you know, 2012, Benghazi. My son almost dying, you know, the second term of Obama. Oh, my goodness. I mean, a family man dealing, you know, who wants to be, you know, not only a pro-life, but pro-family. If, if you could do it, you know, have your wife stay at home lovingly, happily staying at home, you know, because that's what the Bible teaches. But no, we, we kept, they kept pushing, they kept pushing. And it all came down to, you know, then the stones cried out. And now the whole world is on a different path talking about 
what happened in 1711 or 711 or whatever you want to call it. But that was the year that I think it was everything was released. Brother Randy, feel free to comment anytime. I think I have some pictures. What did I watch since this morning? What? Everything's a body part. This is one of the Mount Thor. One of the it looks top. like that, oh, that Prudential Insurance, right? It sure does, doesn't it? <laughs> that's, a, that's a big one. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's like one of the furthest, sheerest drop offs. You know, you can fall, kill yourself on a lot of mountains, but this one will kill you dead or faster because. You could fall longer. Well, I guess it wouldn't kill you faster because, I mean, you'd still fall. If you fell and hit that ledge, you'd die. But if you straight dropped, anyway, that's a world record. This is a world record, too. Something. Forget what it's uh, the Great Trango is famous for. But there's some weird hype, there, you know. But supposedly, if you rubbed the the earth the flat disc of the earth it'd be as smooth as a pool table there's the thumbnail this is uh from one of those places where they made the coke not cocaine come on rj it's not the 1970s man hey what's that say hutton. james hutton born i Eight two two. I could be reading into it, but I don't think I am. Maybe eighteen twenty two. I don't know. What's uh? You know, here this is. Uh, well, maybe we'll bump into that picture again. Like I said in the description, RJ, just a short show. This is the first map that a Roman Catholic made. We'll look at him. Brother somebody. There's Abyssinthia. This map has a lot of Ethiopia on it. It's the first map, you know, so what would they do? The first time Rome basically makes a map, well, they didn't take Jerusalem, or oh, I, I ruined the analogy. They didn't take Earth out of the center. They took Jerusalem out of the center of this map. It just placed it, you know, almost in the center. But that was revolutionary at the time. See, see, it's not in the center of the world, and you know, and, and this was the first Roman, the incredible medieval map of the world we'll look at that see if we can't figure it out I, I i mean that's a busy map so there's jerusalem this is the same map i just flipped over it's flipped oh over. and that's the point where right if see, it's on the ball it can be anywhere because it's in the center it, it, see the red one on the outline when it go to the <laughs> next one it'll be it's down oh, here yeah. now so that Jerusalem, I don't know why they flipped it in this picture. I don't even. It's upside down. What are they doing? Look at quick look at the tractor wars, tracing gasoline, vaporous fumes. Not silent, but deadly ones, but maybe deadlier than you think. Big businesses making tractors it was a doggone monopoly man they had to do it they had to make tractors and steamboats we all saw that movie today about the steamboats and it was delicious look at this fascinated me this pulley system boy they that's using the power takeoff of your running engine at all times isn't it been on a wagon of hay like that except being pulled by a little more modern tractor but not there were still some of those in the barn 
near my. And then they went to this. Where's the other preview picture? Okay, so they went from, this is a clock. Helped them discover latitude or longitude problem. Now, the guy that they invented, again, he had to win a prize. And so he came up with this after a few years. He, he started with this, you know, same guy. Oh, I'm making these super good wooden clocks, man. Oh, and now I got this. Come on. That, that right there is a prototype as you reverse engineer something before you cut it out of, you know, metal and big costly thing. I don't know. But they reversed engineered the things they thought were important. And going back to the tractor wars, it involved how quickly can we get these big industrial machines off steam and into burning gasoline? Any comments so far, brother? Uh -huh. Well, yeah, it's going to require, yeah, effort, time, but, and then attention to detail, certainly. <laughs> now, something, you know, in real life, this is supposed to market, but they didn't even get it right. So this, this line here, oh, that's the line for the chapters. But I just liked this picture. This is the place they figured all that James Harrison, he won the prize. These guys gave him the prize. They lived here. This winding river, flat sun. Just love that picture. The black beard. Oh, you know, I left that, him a comment. I left a comment on that. I saw I gave that a thumbs up right before we went on the air. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, it looks like the horns on those pictographs to me. Well, I thought it looked like a mortar board graduation cap right yeah i see uh you said it looks like he's wearing some sort of graduation mortar board appreciate that brother now this dr hamamoto he's uh, known as and i like him he does give out you know he's one of those guys that's given out a whole lot of truth just not all of the truth it, because he's so emotionally attached to this world. You might ask it, prove it. A historical foundation uh, with secular music. And you combine that with the body houses, the gambling houses, the sporting men, the drinking and the fighting and the fussing. And that, that's just the universal of all working class people, right? So sure. you take all that together and um, you can you can resist mighty empires. And I'm suggesting that right now, as we speak on this Thanksgiving of 2021, we have a lot to be thankful for. You and me are alive. We're healthy. We're healthy. We're going to stay that way. And um, we're on the, the rise. We're on the move because we have this, this rich universal of all working class people, right? So you take all that together and um, you can you can resist mighty empires. And I'm suggesting that right now, as we speak on this Thanksgiving of 2021, we have a lot to be thankful for. You and me are alive. We're healthy. We're healthy. We're going to stay that way. And um, we're on the, the rise. We're on the move because we have this, this rich cultural river that just keeps it's like the mighty Mississippi. It's like the River Thames. It just doesn't, it's eternal, right? That no. wasn't even hardly, but midway through the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, 20, middle 20, Thanksgiving 21, you know, and we were all thankful. We didn't know anything about the uh, unexpected rise in some diseases and things. There's a lot of different things going on. And, uh, you know, I, I think he'd be singing a different tune right now. We're all healthy. We're all happy. You know, we just went through three and a half years of Joseph Biden when everybody knows his son was on meth and he hid the laptop. But everybody knows that Hillary took screwdrivers and hammers and destroyed hers. And the Republicans were mad as hell and they weren't. Well, they kept taking it. There is. 
they're as loyal as Hillary was to Bill when Monica Lewinsky was under his desk for six hours at a time in one stretch, according to the Star Report. We just don't care. It's, it's going to go one way or the other. I don't know if we have time to talk about baptism tonight, but baptism represents birth, she says, or Terry, first, first by water. When we believe with our heart, mind, destroyed temple, and declare with our mouth, time to get baptized. You know, it, 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 should, you know, it takes more than just your characters in something like this to frame your position on baptism. But for the most part, you got to believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. This unknown fish thing from a year ago, I just thought I didn't see it, but, you know, prehistoric fish weir. It's how they... are not sharing, though. Or, or, oh, it's how they trapped and saved, uh, you know, well, what if we get hungry tomorrow, Daddy? Well, we're going to have this fish weir here. They they do this in the creek. They... And the, they keep it at the same level and they'd have a place to fish. See how they step it down here for, they keep different fish, I guess, in different, funnel them into narrow places downstream. I mean, people can live when they have to. And it wasn't that they were primitive. There was a time when the great nation of Israel wasn't allowed to have swords because they were paying tribute to the Philistines. It, sometimes you live good and sometimes you don't. They, they promised the, the jobs are going to last for 40 years. That ain't going to happen. You've heard that before. Oh, I've heard it twice. And we've heard that here prior to the mine shutting down in 82. Don't worry about it, general manager. This mine will never shut down. You have a job. My dad helped build the one that they're talking about here in uh, Kearney, Arizona. You know, it's just another one. Uh, they fought this. Those people that were just speaking fought against because these this corporation has ruined cities, poisoned towns, and is killing the earth. And they could never pass the bill for, I guess, 20 years. And finally, they slipped it through a couple of years ago in a one of those 13,000-page military bills that if we don't pass this, our, our, our boys are going to die in Afghanistan. House Resolution 687. So now they can have, now they have the world's largest copper mine and its corruption is shocking. You know, and taking care of all of the schools, always donating backpacks. The other day, the they, you know, so they opened up the world's biggest copper mine, snuck it in. Some people love it because they gave them a backpack and they bought a new scoreboard for the football field. It's just not going to work for them, brother. What do you think? Good luck. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on that. Let's go back to that first Catholic map. He was a Camel de Lis, monastic order of the Pontifical Rite in Catholicism on Pontifical Rite is the term given to ecclesiastical institutions either created by the Pope or approved by it with the formal decree known in Latin as Decretum Laudis. Huh. Okay. Well, he had the chance to say, I just want to bump Jerusalem off center. What do we, you know, it's, so they had clunic reforms. Huh. Okay. Otto the three, Henry the second, they might play a part in this. I basically just wanted you to see they don't have much except, you know, the guy that in the famous map, you know, 
These are the same buildings he lived in. Will we come back to that? Ah, uh, what was this? Is this saved for a reason? Ah, uh, and so. Yeah, certainly. Just thinking again, another thing about water there um, is I was reminded of a story I've been telling quite a lot recently because it's just my book took me there for my research. Um, but it's about dragons. And yeah, I, I have this theory in this rumination, this speculation I've kind of made a few times that I, bibl biblically speaking, I feel like obviously the seraphim are fiery flying serpents. So there is a class of angel that could be defined as a dragon. Do you hear that? Yeah, I think I did hear it. Ser seraphim are the angels, the seraphim, flying dragons. That just that seems yeah. to be their animalistic form of some kind. And angels can, can come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and types of animals, like the living creatures with four heads, like different animals, you know, and the wheels and the thrones and all sorts of things and the cherubim. But it seems like the seraphim are, you could say they were, they were some kind of serpent a fiery flying yeah. feathered serpent thing or something. And you see these, these serpents all over the earth in different um, cultures. I like, um the rainbow serpent, for example, of Australia, which carves the mountains with its body, or you have the Le Leviathan in the Bible, actually it's probably a good example of this now. Right. I think about it, which is a sea, is a, ser is a sea serpent. Is it not? Is Leviathan or something yeah. like that. And then those are, those are all kind of the bad guys, not the seraphim. Right. Well, Ezekiel has some, I don't know, vivid descriptions, uh, more or less, of some strange. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you know. I listened to some of it, and I, and I tried to listen to it, but they were they were going in real time, and the people in the comments kept going like, "Water's weird, man. Oh, wow, what's going on with the water?" And I'm going like, so I went forward to to find out what they were. Memory? Flying feathered serpent thing or something and you see these these serpents all over the earth in different um, cultures like um the rainbow serpent for example of australia which carves the mountains with its body or you have the Le leviathan in the bible actually it's probably a good example of this now right. I think about it which is a sea is a, ser is a sea serpent is it not is leviathan or something yeah. like that and then you have obviously in america the feathered serpent quetzalcoatl um, yep. and you have dragons all throughout Europe. It's like dragon. You know, King George slayed a dragon. All these type of things. And then in China, you have the dragons, which were literally that was uh, Saint George killed a dragon, but the dragon was, was the bad guy. That old dragon. What it, it, if it was me? I'd be pop. You know, talking to this girl who's kind of sounds like a flatterer. Ooh, yeah, wow. Ooh, you know just hearing this for the first time she's all in who did who got thrown i i am going to open up a new tab because we didn't have i didn't have a tab open for bible here that's a shame on me i know what it says in revelation 20 who got thrown into the pit i know what one of the titles is and so do you and so does everybody else. But there may be a few that are going like, Seraphim are dragons. I heard a guy tell me. Oh, okay. Well, he bound, uh, seized the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil and Satan. I all, you know, as per usual, RJ, I would invite Paul to hush his mouth until he quits millstoning people and and just coming up with the craziest things that without you know and here i'm going to show you in the scripture the seraphim dragon connection okay it's going to be hard that's going to be hard to do look at these numbers of people that fought and died in the size of their armies that you know from 1711 The War of Spanish Secession, did this is was this in time with the end of the Golden Age? Because there had to be a reaping before 1711. They call it the extermination of the last Mayas for their gold. The War of Spanish Secession, it was a great power conflict fought between 1701 and 1714. 
the immediate cause was the oh no we have no heir for the appointed bloodline yeah charles the Habsburg. you can tell by their chin and their pouty little lip right they still are in power the Habsburgs. honkies from spain their brother the philip of anjou Definitely, 1700 to 1724. Spanish secession. Veils are being lifted. Great Northern Wars. And I didn't look this one up, but just based on the pictures, the reaping, you know, was a vital time in our history, too. What is it? just the same picture over and over again. One great picture in the front, and then a bunch of. Oh, you can't defend a star fort. Nobody would ever fight a star fort. Star forts weren't made. Okay, well, tell that to these guys. Somebody's getting attacked. They don't care if their star forts weren't built for defense. Maybe that's proven it. Same fortified cities they were talking about in the Bible. Everybody just moved into them. They moved. If you invaded Amsterdam, Amsterdam, damn, 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 today, it'd be the same thing as if you sieged it a thousand years ago for all intents and purposes. But anyway, one deathless king and around 1711, all of this happened and all of these people, the Marlboros and all of this, say they all got set up. And most of them were in power until World War I. You know, for various reasons. I made some adjustments. I thought I'd be done with that. Now, where did it go? For various reasons, these armies in the nine years up to it were going like, we can't afford all these armies Things were so good at the rest of the thousand year reign and now they're attacking us and it's it's over. You can't touch it. It's over. 1885. One of the first things to ever burn gasoline was this. It's made out of wood. It's the prototype, you know? They had to convert it. I think one of the only real inventions of since Satan's been loose this last 335 years is somebody, for some crazy reason, decided to change a, a perfectly good steam engine into something that burned off of coal gas. You ever hear of coal gas? Was that developed by Standard Oil? Nope. It's normally, sometimes it's called town gas. So he took a perfectly good steam engine, turned it into something that burned. He perfected a Lenore engine. The Lenore engine burned coal gas. Coal gas, you know, flammable gaseous fuel made from coal and supplied to the ewer user via a piped distribution center it is produced when coal is heated strongly in the absence of air town gas we always wondered about those people he had to go around and light candles all night loud at nine o'clock and all's well all the towns had town gas they were burning this coal gas that's what the lights were in the old but town gas is a more general term referring to the gas as fuels produced for sale to customers and municipalities and it was used up until the time of when natural gas was developed during the 1940s and 50s and finally put in for sale like it's safe enough in the 60s and 70s in the United Kingdom and Australia, where they care about, you know, there were a few accidents. It's just like, you know, the United States just jumped right into that. No, GMO food is good. And the rest of the world said, we'll see. All right. But it's, it is interesting. The famous overrated poet, Sylvia Plath, credited with advancing the genre of confessional poetry. 
It does it really this synthetic gas don't put your head in a stove and commit suicide because that's what Sylvia Plath did you know when they would just stick their head place their body in the appliance you know it'll kill you quickly it's like kind of like you know don't tell them how to build a bomb but if you ever if you want to know how to kill yourself <laughs> geez kidding me they're still using it today RJ it's still town gas, man. Yeah. You used to be able to buy it in the envelope. No, I don't know what that is. And they're not, they're not giving us a big enough picture. Mantles in their unused fat, flat packed form. Maybe we'll see Coke at a smokeless. You see, it's, they've got it perfected, but not much has advanced along the way. There's a ruins of an old one. That's how you illuminate. It's illuminating gas, gasification. World War I is when they really perfected it. Loss of high quality gas oil like used as motor fuel. And it's how they tore down all the trees. It's it's it was one of the ways that everything happened. Now everybody saw John Levy and you know, we've talked about Coke and everybody it, it but, but for your information, it is a gray, hard, porous, coal-based fuel with a high carbon content, very few impurities made by heating coal or oil in the absence of oxygen and, you know, nitrogen. But that's what they call air because they don't try to be specific. It's a destructive distillation process. It is an important industrial product used mainly in iron ore smelting, but also as a fuel in stoves and forges when air pollution is a concern. Okay. So doing it the way they want to do it, or it's just it's going to be bad. And China was doing it four centuries before Christ. They find it everywhere, 1589. And I showed you, we're still using it today because really all they cared was taking the things that, you know, are all over the world and have been forever using it properly, probably isn't bad. And, you know, when we had big populations, this would, you know, these are everywhere. It, you know, it, Colorado, Utah, because we had billions of people back then. That's why they're showing them from everywhere. And they're still using them. And they lie to us, and we know it. <clears throat> So the way that one underground hard rock mining goes and why the people in Arizona are so worried about their town is because it's just, it doesn't work good. They, they This is the one that they, ventilation, they did it before. That's that picture from 1822. Is that, you know, it looks like an 1822, but did they find this or did they build that and start reusing it again? And this is what happens to the ground, subsistence, subsidence. After they take all the ground out, it stays good for a while. Then all of a sudden, boom, the whole mine just caves in. The Ridgeway Underground Mine. I think that's in Colorado. And it, they keep saying, oh, it'll be okay. Geoengineer.org. You ever hear of it? Geoengineering. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah, say, as far as the website. That yeah, the weather, yeah. you know, but not for mining. Block caving is an underground hard rock mining method that involves undermining an ore body, allowing it to progressively collapse under its own weight. It is the underground version of open pit mining. And so that's what they're going to do. Uh, 
geoengineering. It looks so small. It looks like a toy. Subsistence is, can happen, you know, it just happens. It happened here. This is, looks like the crooked house is kind of a tourist place now. That was the result of mining subsistence. I think the world is waxing old as a garment. That's the sinkage in that amount of time. 1977 on the bottom. 1925 on the top. How many resets have there been in the last 335 years? I think there was one in 1958. We still have to look at that. I mean, I think that these world's largest open mines, some of them, you know, go down two and a half miles in South Africa. They say it began operations in 1986. I'm saying, come on. You got to be kidding me. You know, they've probably been digging on the same thing, like they're digging in the same cities. Another one real close to that same area. Just dig it down and process it and bring out the gold. Largest one in the United States in California. It's a mile and a half. You know, it worked between 1815 and 1956. That's a pretty good stretch. Everything's the same houses. Everything's the same world. Everything's the, well, this is a flat wagon in the Maginot line. We've studied that so much. You realize it was built into a mountain and they found it and said, oh, we can, we can use it in our story of, uh, you know, I know people fought in World War II, but it was a fake to set up the mafias, to fake the bomb, to fake that we have quantum physics and Schrodinger's cat can be a dead or alive or you don't understand string theory and you should drop out of college. Yeah, the well, airplane was perfected during that time also, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, right in time for the gasoline to be popular. This is something that we haven't studied. This is one thing I've learned since this morning. There was something, a French product, used a lot by the Italians and others. And basically, this genius-looking fellow here had, that's where these came from. He sold these railroad tracks that went into these tunnels that we see all over the world in the Maginot line, in the tunnels of the mail systems. And it basically, it's that small gauge railroad track that is everywhere under the world. And, and uh, they couldn't have done it without it, you know? Couldn't have, you couldn't have utilized and reworked the underground tunnels and that's that's what it looks like when it went over different, you know. When they had the technology, and, and I I do believe that that's that's one of the inventions that we can credit after Satan's been loosed. Okay, we did that one. Shoot, what we need to do is have Paco showing a big bong on the. So, brother. Tomorrow I go into school. It looks like it's three weeks left and the prayers have been answered. I did that whole, like waited two years or a year to go to school and then uh, had to wait. Said They said I applied too late to get into the spring of last year. So I came this one, had a little trouble, but pretty much just have to go in and finish off the last few weeks. What am I going to do with my time now that, you know, because I've got the full-time ministry and now 
I think I got to get back to proving that the stones find the gold, check out these sacred mountains around me. Yeah, you have opportunities, yeah. I just don't want, I just want people to realize that part of the, you know, like my life, you're living your life right now. They are living their lives right now. We started out the show asking them, you know, I pondered this show. You were pondering, you know, salvation issues. How much deception can a person believe knowing that they have time to look into it, but they choose not to because maybe they got to keep up with the uh, L.A. law or... Well, Set, you know, TV. I have a, another question <laughs> to pitch at you. You know, I don't know if you're watching the precious metals market, particularly gold. You know, and and what they're predicting. I find it ironic that if the currency is totally useless why would you sell me whatever gold at whatever we and then take my worthless currency in a, in exchange what is the motive well how does that make sense uh <laughs> is that a why is water wet kind of question you know well well no i'm just saying you know they t you know you, you got to invest in gold and people are willing to sell it to you in exchange for that totally worthless currency that they're telling you to get rid of how does where's the logic and oh take my gold and i'll take all your worthless currency What's the logic in that? We're having a judgment right now. There's going to be eventually, if not before this election, then the midterms of the next election look pretty sketchy. <laughs> now, a lot of people are going to die. A lot of people are going to starve, but not probably the majority. What's the price of gold going to do? They're going to be living underneath the thumb. If you're in a city, if you're not in a place where you feel safe, where you can run, then you're going to be living under their rules, doing it their way. What's your gold going to be worth then? Why wouldn't they take your $3,000 for something that I can go find out in the mountains and just use some chemicals and here's your, here's your freaking gold? No, it's a setup. It's a setup. It's a trap. They're not doing it because they're dumb. It, they're doing it because they have a very good reason. You know, <laughs> it, it, why did why did they short sell stocks on nine eleven? You know, for American Airlines, they hey, there's pennies on the table. They're going to take it. The wide road isn't going to figure anything out. You heard Doctor Hamamoto. We're alive. We're happy. We live in this country. We have our culture that's going to keep it immovable as the Mississippi. Well, really? If you, come on, man. I would say what gold you have right now, hold on to it. Don't buy any more. Don't, you know, if you feel like you need some more junk silver, the pre-1964 silver coins, and it does go up to 1973 for half dollars, 37% in your Kennedy half dollars up to 73. So you find your silver that way, but don't go spending these exorbitant prices on, it. ooh, it's so pure. What are you going to do? Go down and take a cougar and say, uh, I, I want to get a loaf of bread and three chickens, and here's where's my change for the cougar and and your guy at the barter store is going to go, ka -ching! just as easy as Bitcoin, you know. It's, it's, I don't know what gold's going to be worth after the next reset, after the last reset when the Christians are well, being. Like I say, they, they always explain everything 
totally backwards. It's not that gold is more valuable. It's the devaluation of the current, the fiat currency mm. is what's going on. I mean, you think it to drive it up faster to, to make the inflation go faster because they've changed their mind now. Inflation's back on the table. What is the, the 16 alpha five, uh, have I seen any videos of modern day Tehran, Iran, sir? I watched seven videos about modern Iran last night and I was blown away. That's probably how I felt a couple of years ago when I saw the pictures of China thinking it was some backward hick thing and only Taiwan and Hong Kong. But the whole, I mean, yeah, Iran is a real country. And Ukraine was a real country. It's not now. It's a war-torn deal. Wasn't Persia the nation that took over after Babylon fell? Now, the Medes and the, Medes, and the, Persian the, Medes and the Persians were the same, yeah. you know. The, and there was that law that it's so intriguing in Daniel. Let's look it up and let's let's and show them that you know, like, oh, we had to look for the record and we went and found it, you know. And we, Daniel, I, I want to find that, but Daniel also has the where they tricked Daniel into, oh, you you're going to all have to pray for a statue, and it seems like Nebuchadnezzar just signed it with the paperwork. But he was bound because once it was written in law in Babylonia, the Babylonians, the Medes, and the Persians all had to agree on the same law as Cyrus. All those drop in on a little bit of Daniel here, and then we'll wrap it up, see what the Lord brings. I'm very curious because I was very upset about well, the way I some of the professors treating Christianity as a joke and, but being so, so careful always of, uh, you know, going to, you know, don't insult uh, the transsexuals who I saw today that the college athletics are not going to allow transsexuals to compete in women's sports next year or anymore. Did you see that one? Uh, I don't recall seeing that it sounds like you know what took him so long but yeah that, that'd be a good idea or I, you know i'd vote for it right because it doesn't make any sense <laughs> well, what, yeah, i don't see a lot of, i don't does. see a lot of girls changing sex to go say uh come on you you i want to fight mike tyson you know, when's that going to happen? I thought I'd go to Ezra yep. because then we get more, you know, it was like <coughs> Cyrus. I think it was Alpha. Somebody pointed out that it, it'd probably be better. Daniel did have the laws of the Medes and Persians. They tricked at him. But this is what I think I was thinking about. Same time period and everything. You know, Cyrus restores the holy vessels. Uh, later on when they're building... They get all kinds of trouble. Who's going to build up there? Even a fox would tear down your wall. Tobias. Some of the other ones. To King Artaxerxes. From your servants. The men west of the Euphrates. Let it be known to the king that the Jews who came from you to us have returned to Jerusalem. And they are rebuilding that rebellious and wicked city, restoring its walls, repairing its foundation. Let it be known to the king that if that city is rebuilt and its walls are restored, they will not pay duty, tribute, toll, and the royal treasury will suffer. Oh, they're just going to talk about it. So it's as interesting. Now, because we are in service of the palace and it is not fitting for us to allow the king to be dishonored, we have sent to inform the king that a search should be made of the record books 
of your fathers. In these books, you will discover and verify that the city is a rebellious city, harmful to kings and provinces, inciting sedition from ancient times. That is why the city was destroyed. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was that great kingdom because King David was the apple of God's eye. It was destroyed because his descendants turned away. I'm talking about Zerubbabel. So they did. They, they sent the letter and he said, we translated it. We did the search. I issued a decree. That's how they do it, RJ. No, they, yeah. don't, they, don't just, they don't just wave their hand and say, search it out. They issue decrees. It was discovered that the city has revolted against kings from ancient times, engaging in rebellion and sedition. Yeah, man. See, now they should be an executive order. From the president. <laughs> uh, yeah, said, yeah, 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 that's the same thing. You know, they so King David revolted. They were they are a rebellious, stiff necked people. They had mighty kings who ruled over Jerusalem. They exercised authority of the whole region west of the Euphrates, and everybody paid duty, tribute, and toll to them. Now therefore stop them thus the construction was stopped and it remained at a standstill until the second year send out they said oh no this is terrible what happened they sent him the letter to king cyrus all peace let it be known i'm ezra i'm the scribe for nehemiah man we've got permission to do this and blah, 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 who authorized this? And so they did it. And they said, you know, you, I don't, you want to read that? They just laid out for them, you know, uh, verse 10 through uh, the close. Well, let me expand it here. We're beginning with verse 10. Por favor. We also asked for their names so that we could write down the names of their leaders for your information. And this is the answer they returned. We are servants of the God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the temple that was built many years ago, which a great king of Israel built and completed. But since our fathers angered the God of heaven, he delivered them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the Chaldean, who destroyed this temple and carried away the people to Babylon. In his first year, however, Cyrus, king of Babylon, issued a decree to rebuild this house of God. He also removed from the temple of Babylon the gold and silver articles belonging to the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken and carried there from the temple in Jerusalem. King Cyrus gave these articles to a man named Shezbazar, whom he appointed governor and instructed, take these articles, put them in the temple in Jerusalem, and let the house of God be rebuilt on its original site. So this Shezbazar came and laid the foundation of the house of God in Jerusalem, and from that time until now it has been under construction, but, had, but it has not yet been completed. Now, therefore, if it pleases the king, let a search be made of the royal archives in Babylon to see if King Cyrus did indeed issue a decree to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. Then let the king send us his decision in this matter. Any comments, brother? Well, yeah, that's uh, just, you know, self-explanatory. of. Yeah. Uh, I think the Bible the answers these questions if people look into them. You know, and, and they, they're quoting letters. The scroll was found in the fortress of... What? Yeah, At these were it was that where is that? 
literally the place of gathering according to Darius the Great inscription. Mm. Wow. Don't look like, yeah, some nice. Uh... Yeah, I was going to, you know, okay, I'm a pretty good sculptor. Not that good. All right, so it's these guys and, you know, old Persian. They, everything makes sense when you keep the Bible in order and you realize that, you know, there had to be a time of the Gentile. It started with Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah, these people, King Cyrus, Nebuchadnezzar. They, I think Isaiah was the first, in, you know, uh, a prophesy. Go break that yeah. one. Huh? Isaiah was the first to prophesy about what would happen in the future and and, and named Cyrus. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. He even named you know, him. So so we uh, long see before it. it happened. Long before it happened. So we see that they still live in those cities that they rebuilt. We live in them. There are some that haven't been cleaned up and they, they still find them. 40 feet down like we all saw today with the steamboats because that's the way this crazy world is unfolding but when you put it in that they've added the thousand years and you have this new theology it's all right there it's right there for us something's going to happen maybe not this election but it's not going to keep getting better and better we we've we've got to we've got our work cut out for us and uh you know yeah the glory days are behind amen so it looks like we did a another show in less than an hour rj do you what do you think do you have any final words brother well anyone that's on their way there sweet dreams once you get there uh and uh yeah hopefully uh being comfortable is yeah part of that uh uh, Amen. Experience. Your joy will be renewed in the morning. Whatever happens, good or bad to this nation, it does not affect their salvation. What affects your salvation is what we wanted you to ponder from the beginning of the show. Uh, how much, you know, what can we say what really doesn't matter? You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Yeah, trying to yeah uh, uh, come to realize the truth of uh, what is happening today, yeah, and what got us here today, and where you know where are we going after today? Where are we headed? It's going to take a baby step of faith, not a giant leap of. Well, I have to believe everything my teachers told me from the globe to string theory to Einstein to Sigmund Freud. No, <laughs> everything Jesus said in the Bible is true. That's it in a nutshell. And that's why we do what we do. Because it's a flat earth nation. The golden age has passed because the mud flood was the Armageddon. We're never going to tell you anything else. Why would we? We're trying and proving that we have and showing that we have your best interest at heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Aho. Aloha. Arriba dirty. Ciao.